Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Bonnie Sorensen. I'm from the California Department of Public Health. And it's a great honor to welcome all of you here today uh, as we take another important step toward our efforts to create a healthier California. In addition to our governor, uh, I'm very pleased uh, to announce that we are joined today uh, by Jot Condi, president and CEO of the California Restaurant Asso uh, Association, uh, Dr. Harold Goldstein, executive director of the California Center for Public Health Advocacy, assembly member Mark Desaigne, uh, Democrat of Concord, uh, Senator Alex Padilla, uh, Democrat of Posimia. Also in this audience, we have Alicia Sanchez, our legislative advocate for the California Division of the American Cancer Society, Dr. Richard Frankenstein, president of the California Medical Association, Jim Gordon, president of Consumer Federation of California, Ignacia Hernandez, legislative director of the Consumer Federation of California, supervisor Liz Niss of the Santa Clara County Board of Supervisors, Vanessa Sahina, regional director of the Latino Coalition for a Healthy California. I'm very proud that under the leadership of Governor Schwarzenegger, we are taking aggressive steps to combat the obesity epidemic and create a healthier California. The governor's leadership has put in place some of the nation's most innovative and successful strategies to promote health and nutrition. Among other, other successes, the governor has established the toughest school nutrition reforms in the nation, taking junk food and sugary sodas off our campuses, banned trans, food, trans fat and fried food and unhealthy oils in school meals, and invested millions of dollars in fresh fruit and vegetables in school meals. And today, under the governor's leadership, we take another major step forward in our efforts to help consumers make more informed, healthy food choices to help reduce obesity, hypertension, coronary artery disease, and related costs. Please join me in welcoming Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bonnie, for the wonderful introduction. And um, I want to thank everyone for coming out here today in this beautiful day. And uh, Senator Badillo, thank you very much for giving us a reason to celebrate healthy choices here today. Uh, SB 1420 is a great bill. And I want to say thank you to Senator Badillo for working so hard, and not only this year, but even last year, he started already working on this bill and always coming down to our office and talking about we got to go and have menu labeling. And he was persistent and he was passionate about it. So thank you very much. Let's give him a big hand for the great work that he has done. Uh, he also worked together with uh, Assemblywoman Nicole Parra. We, we want to thank her also. And a big thank you should also go to Jad Kanti. Uh, who is right here today, and also the California Restaurant Association, uh, because it is very important that they have supported the bill. And I, of course, love when you can bring the various different stakeholders together and sit down at the table and agree and work through the various different differences that they had. And let me tell you, with SB 1420, the table is going to be a lot healthier. Starting in 2011, restaurants will provide calorie information on their menus. When people go to the grocery store now or the supermarkets, they can already read the labels and make uh, informed decisions about what to eat. But now they also have that pleasure when they go to the restaurant. They will be able to go and uh, see how many calories did they take in. That will lead to healthier options on the menu and it will benefit all of the people. I'm really pumped up about this because once again, I tell you, California is the leader in something. Uh, we are the leader in many different areas, but here's one more area. Uh, we are the first state in the union that actually has this and requires this kind of information. And the federal government, may I remind you, uh, is already being pushed to follow our lead. Health and fitness are important to me, and since I have taken office, I have waged a war on obesity and have promoted a healthy lifestyle through our Governor's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports, or if it is through signing bills and passing laws, like signing a bill to remove the dangerous trans fats uh, in our restaurants, and also worked with the legislators 
to make sure that our children have healthy alternatives in the schools and that we terminate uh, all the junk food and the sodas from our vending machines in our public schools and uh, you know give them uh, alternatives like adding fruit and vegetables so that kids can learn good nutrition early. Uh, we have accomplished a lot in those areas but of course there is a long way still to go because if you think about it that the last decade Californians have gained 360 million pounds. Think about that for a little bit. Now, when I was in the Austrian army, I drove a tank that weighed 50 tons. Now multiply that by 3,500. That's as many, as many pounds as Californians have gained. It's huge. This epidemic leads to major problems like diabetes, heart diseases, sleep disorders, and depressions. And it is no surprise that obesity is the number two killer in the United States right behind uh, smoking. Uh, that is why I'm very happy to be here today with Senator Padilla and all the other elected officials and big believers in this cause uh, to stand here today and to celebrate this. We want to make sure that we have healthier choices in our supermarkets, healthier choices in our restaurants, healthier choices in our schools so that people can make healthy decisions. So thank you very much everyone for being here again and we want to say thank you again to Senator Padilla and we want him now to come out to say a few words about his great bill. Please welcome Senator Padilla. Thank you, uh, Mr. Governor. I want to thank you not just for the introduction, but for demonstrating strong leadership in the effort to improve uh, public health here in the state of California. Uh, and I, too, am very happy to be here celebrating the signing of SB 1420. Governor, with your signature, uh, you are making California the nation's leader in nutrition policy. Uh, as the governor said, California will become the first state in the nation uh, to utilize menu labeling in our fight against the obesity epidemic. Now, we've all heard the same advice from doctors and other medical and health experts. Uh, as individuals, we need to exercise more and eat better. Uh, but in order to eat more healthy, uh, we need to know the nutrition information of the food that we're eating. And it's easy to do when we go to the supermarkets, uh, but when we eat out, it's a different story. And that's where this bill comes in. SB 1420 is a major breakthrough in the fight against the obesity epidemic, uh, and it represents nothing less than a sea change. The way Californians order food is about to change. Californians will soon be empowered with reliable, accessible nutrition information at the point of purchase, at the point of ordering, so we can all make better, more informed, and healthier choices. And when I say all Californians, I mean all Californians. No matter where you live in this state, no matter which county you live in this state, the benefits of making this information available is coming to you. Uh, we estimate that more than 17,000 restaurants uh, will be uh, soon posting nutrition information on their menus and their menu boards. There are a couple of people I need to thank that have helped get this bill to this governor's desk this year, beginning with our legislative leaders, both uh, the President Pro Tem of the Senate, Don Parada, Speaker Karen Bass, uh, our, uh, my co, uh, principal co, or excuse me, joint author, Senator Carol Migdon from San Francisco, uh, principal co-author in the Assembly, uh, Mark Desaunier, soon to be Senator Mark Desaunier. You know, Senator, Senator-elect, I'll say, Desaunier, <laughs> yes, there's an election. There is Wall Street hasn't canceled that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is, was particularly important in this effort. He is a former restaurateur, and his early support and name on the bill uh, gave it a lot of early credibility. And I think it's safe to say that without his leadership in the Assembly, the bill would not have gotten to the governor's desk. Uh, I also want to acknowledge a couple of people from my staff. Uh, my legislative uh, person last year, who's now at UCLA Law School, uh, Lisa Alarcón is here for the ceremony and taking pictures. Uh, she was also helped this year by Alicia Prego uh, and Bill Maybe, my chief of staff. I want to thank them for uh, fighting this fight, even when people said we had no chance. And I want to acknowledge also the sponsors of the bill. 
the California Center for Public Health Advocacy, uh, both Harold Goldstein and Amanda Bloom were tenacious fighters uh, since day one uh, on this bill. And uh, here we are celebrating a victory, like I said, that some people said would never happen. Uh, the American Cancer Society, and specifically Alicia Sanchez, who uh, was part of every strategy session, uh, every committee, testifying, organizing support, lobbying for votes uh, on the bill, uh, and together they built an extraordinary coalition of public health groups and individuals, uh, local governments throughout the state in support of this bill. I uh, also want to take a second to recognize Supervisor Liz Ness from Santa Clara, one of the various counties in the state who uh, not just introduced but adopted their own local ordinance that added to the momentum that brought us here today. Uh, and last but not least, the California Restaurant Association. Uh, it was fierce opposition in the beginning, uh, but uh, much negotiation and compromise at the end that allowed us to achieve a final product uh, that preserved uh, the spirit uh, and the core provisions of the bill while addressing a lot of the concerns to the business community uh, and in develop the bill in a way that's going to be uh, much more easily implemented uh, and still provide the benefits to consumers. So I want to close by saying uh, that the obesity and diabetes impact uh, is prevalent in every community in our state. And that's why we needed the benefits of this bill to apply to every community in our state. In my district alone, the San Fernando Valley, more than a third of children in my district are overweight or at risk of becoming obese. The governor reminded us all of the consequences of those conditions. Many times it's diabetes, it can be heart disease, high blood pressure, hypertension. All told, it is nothing less than a public health crisis. One of my goals when I ran for the Senate and when I got sworn into the Senate was to do everything in my power to empower families to become healthier, to exercise more and eat better. And I looked at Governor Schwarzenegger and saw a natural partner in that effort and today He's proving me right. New York City might have taken the first step as a municipality by adopting a menu labeling ordinance, but today the state of California becomes the first state in the nation to adopt menu labeling on a statewide basis. California has taken the lead, and I can only imagine many other states will soon follow. Thank you, Governor Schwarzenegger, again. Uh, and I just can't help but say, this is fantastic. <laughs> I now want to introduce our next speaker, uh, the champion on the assembly side uh, for this bill, assembly member, soon to be Senator Mark DeSonier. Thanks, Alex. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. This is truly a celebration uh, with many of the stakeholders, I would say, over the course of the last two years. My dream was to have this kind of press conference where the Restaurant Association was here with the public health advocates and legislative leaders and the governor. So it's a little surreal given uh, some of the things we've been through politically in the last uh, few months, but this is a celebration of the system working. First of all, I'd like to thank the governor and his leadership and his staff. Uh, they were tenacious and ultimately we have this better product. Senator Padilla, uh, really the word for today, I think, particularly for you, is tenacity. Uh, his passion and his tenacity on this issue and on public health was evident to all of us. To my colleagues, uh, Senator Migdon and Speaker Bass, Speaker Nunez, who helped very much in the first iteration, and the pro tem, uh, thank you for your efforts. For the public health advocates who stayed with us all the time, urging and urging, and then particularly for the Restaurant Association. Senator Padilla mentioned uh, I'm a former restaurateur. I expect I will be a future restaurateur when my political life is through. I spent over 30 years in the restaurant industry, and I was, and I, Jot and I were just discussing whether I'm still a member or not. Um, <laughs> We'll send you a bill. Um, I was a member of the Restaurant Association. I think what's really important here is the association and the industry stepped up to provide their leadership. In my years in the restaurant industry, I was told over and over again that the most valuable thing you had as an industry was goodwill, which is not unlike government. The most valuable thing we have as elected officials and as member uh, members of your state government is goodwill. And we are trying to reestablish that. Lastly, I'd just like to say, um, that this, Jefferson once said that politics is the art of compromise, and that's what you have in front of us. This is really a remarkable bill because we stuck with it, all of us, and the goal was provide health for all of our 
citizens, but particularly for young people. We of our generation that you see in front of us may be the first American generation that gives to future generation a shorter life, expect a shorter life expectancy. We want to change that. And the first time, the first big effort that we're doing right here in terms of transparency and cooperation with the regulated industry, the Restaurant Association, is to get a, give a better life for future generations of Californians. So with that, I'm happy to introduce Harold Goldstein, who will give a perspective from the public health advocates. Thank you, Assemblymember DeSaunier, um, and thank you, Mr. Governor. The California Center for Public Health Advocacy and the American Cancer Society are the proud sponsors of SB 1420. Elisa Sanchez and I are here to thank all of you who have spoken today, and especially to thank Mr. Padilla and Mr. DeSaunier, Ms. Migden, for your extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary leadership in making this happen. Thank you. And Mr. Governor, Thank you for sticking with us for the last two years to find a genuine and workable strategy for implementing menu labeling here in California. Mr. Governor, in signing SB 1420, you are once again leading the nation in finding solutions to the growing obesity epidemic. Just like your decision in 2005 to get soda and junk food out of California schools created a national movement with states following in your footsteps. Today, you're clearing the way. Your signature will stimulate states and localities all over the country to establish menu labeling laws in cities and counties and states. Because when it comes right down to it, menu labeling is just plain old common sense. It gives the consumers the information they need to make healthier food choices, and it creates an incentive for restaurants to continue reformulating their menu items so that they can be healthier. On behalf of all of us who are committed to solving this obesity crisis, we thank you, Mr. Governor and Mr. Padilla. And it's my pleasure to introduce Jock Condi, the president of the California Restaurant Association. Really? <laughs> I never thought that he would introduce me, and I don't think you wanted to, but thanks anyways. You, yeah. Um, you may be um, asking yourself, why is the leader of the restaurant industry here? Uh, under normal circumstances, I would be considered a skunk at a garden party at a gathering, gathering like this. Um, after all, historically, we as an industry have opposed menu labeling proposals uh, throughout the state and in Sacramento for many years, including uh, SB 120 authored by Senator Padilla last year. Um, there's a couple reasons why we're here. Um, first of all, if the government is going to mandate on restaurants um, the posting of caloric information, then it ought to be the state government um, and it ought to be consistent. Um, what we've seen over the last year or so has been a trend, Santa Clara County for instance, that actually did uh, as a county in San Francisco of course um, sort of help the momentum of this proposal move forward um, quicker. Um, you don't want to have a patchwork of menu labeling laws throughout California that's confusing to chain restaurants. So it's important for the consumers to have consistency and predictability, and it's important to the restaurant industry. Secondly, if the government is going to mandate specific information be posted on menus and menu boards, then restaurants um, ought to have some level of assurance that they're not going to be subject to drive-by lawsuits or frivolous lawsuits. Um, after all, uh, our industry is considered um, more of an art than a science in many respects. And so this bill before the governor today does represent a compromise, and I want to thank Senator Padilla, Senator Migden, and Assemblyman Mark DeSaulnier, and of course, Governor, uh, for your leadership on this. And um, it is a compromise, and um, it's the best that we uh, could have gotten, and we think it's um, it's a, it's a law that's, whose time has come. And again, thank you for all your leadership, Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now let's go and sign the bill.